Dinner is served. Mmm. Aha! I don't need that anymore. So, this is my Asiera F4 milling machine. It's from the 1960s and it's now CNC. So, it's featuring ball screws on X and Y axis as well as servo stepper motors on both X, Y, and Z. Um, and it's running Linux CNC using Pro Basic and a Mesa 7i76E FPGA board to do all the processing and signal generation. It's, um, it's got a lot of features that a much more advanced machine would be found with, um, considering this was just a very manual machine that you had to really know what you're doing to use previously, and I wasn't willing to learn all that. So yeah, now it's got things like touch probes, and those are other cool features to make useful parts. Having moved the perilously top heavy mill into the shed, I immediately took my chance to break it into lots of tiny little pieces. I had done this to assess the feasibility of putting some CNC motors and stuff on it. Um, and at this point I became fully committed to the project as I had broken quite a lot of parts doing this. Um, so it could never really go back to being a manual mill again. So if you're looking for motivation to get a project done, if you break it beyond use, and you have to then commit to it. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. As converting my mill to CNC was the only option for getting it working again, I decided to tackle the x-axis first. Fortunately, both the X and Y looked reasonably adaptable. Disassembly of the 50 year old machine was pretty good. Everything was well oiled and parts disassembled easily. Apart from the X axis gearbox, which had water ingress and was very rusty. I broke most of, most of the parts in this. There was around 20 degrees of backlash in both the X and Y, so I replaced the Acme threads with ball screws. The primary determining factor for the size of these ball screws was the actual bore in the castings where the original Acme nut went. I found that 20mm ball screw had the same size um, nut external surface as the bore castings had. The x-axis ball screw nut was really easy to attach. I made a 3D printed replica of the nut, then I used it to drill and tap the castings. The end plates for the stepper motor were quite a lot harder. Um, initially I made them out of 3D printed PLA. I hoped these would last long enough for me to then be able to mill out an aluminium equivalent. This was a really hard part to design as there's obviously no CAD for a 50 year old mill and there's the dimensions I had to get by using a piece of paper and an oily finger. Um, I then put this into a just a normal printer scanner and then I made some 3D CAD models from this part and the overall x-axis assembly. The PLA parts printed for the x-axis stepper motor holder plate and sort of bearing pack holder were printed out 12 perimeters and 95% infill. These parts weighed around 300 grams, but they still flex quite a lot in use. Hopefully my crappy phone will show you this, but here's what's inside the gearbox thingy. So this is the slide that gets pushed along by the linear screw. The linear screw sits just in this bit here. So it'll run along there, hence this hole at the back. That's where the linear screw goes. And this is also where the spindle's power gets transferred from. Um, but now what I've got to do is get all this out because I need to re-adapt this big casting to fit the new ball screw. Now, and even once I've done all this, the chances are the, the Y-axis motor is probably going to struggle to fit anyway. So. But oh well, we'll deal with that problem when we get there. So I've decided to record this bit because I don't really know how it's going to go. I'm going to try and get this nut off. and. Uh, I need to spin it round 180 degrees, which is annoying because if I didn't have to do that, this would all be very easy. So I've made this little 3D printed thing in red because red's cool looking. And I'm just going to unscrew it and hopefully all the little balls don't piss off and then I cry for a few days. So as long as that doesn't happen, we'll be good. Here comes the moment of truth. We are on. See if we can actually hypothetically get it back on that end.
cool. It works. Now I can print the end caps so that when I do what I just did then, it doesn't feel like it's going to fall off straight away because that felt like it's going to fall off straight away. For the y-axis ball screw to mount to you, this part was machined up. Um, it features a hole for the bearing pack to mount in, which then holds the ball screw, and it screws into the original casing of the mill. So this worked out really nicely. Heads up, I didn't make this part. This part was made by somebody who knew what they're doing. So now you can see that the ball screw bearing pack has been screwed into the casing of the mill. A tiny notch was cut out, so this helps to both locate it and also it was fouling. So it was it was kind of a good thing actually. I then made the mounts for the stepper motor to attach to. So these were primarily done on a lathe. And a bit of 3D printing was used to make some little joining brackets because I couldn't actually get all four standoffs to mount on the casing as I'd like because of different features on the mill. So I had to come up with this sort of wacky arrangement. I also 3D printed a big jig, which was used to mark out where to drill the holes with because I am bad at getting holes in the right place and I can't really screw it up too much if I have a big 3D printed jig. So that concludes the conversion of the X and Y axis hardware. The Z axis was fairly easy in comparison. As all the force is acting downwards on the lead screw, there's very little backlash, so I didn't need to change it out for a ball screw. I mounted the stepper motor parallel to the drive axis, and I connected the two with a timing pulley. This was quite fun because to mount the pulley to the shaft where the handle used to be, they used to use a tapered pin. So I machined a five mil hole inside of my pulley and then used a tapered reamer to match the whole of the existing feature on the mill. This was my first ever time using a tapered reamer and it was really good. It left a very tight tolerance part um, because you can taper it in place with all parts in situ. So this worked really nicely and has been working well. After the primary hardware for the X, Y and Z axis were all complete, I added limit switches to each. The limit switches were inductive and I simply mounted them using some little 3D printed brackets on the original rails where sort of stuff used to mount previously. Once this was done, it was time to finally assemble everything and put it into the corner of the room where I could then begin on the wiring. To connect the three phase components to the single phase AC I have available, I used a roto phaser and this roto phaser then gives out three phase into this big breaker switch here, which is permanently left on um, because I don't have a way of flicking it. <laughs> Um, there's also a neutral there as well and then that connects to the MCBs there's a switchable one here which is used to turn a transformer on and off so the transformer is used to supply the voltage for the relay that's used to control the coolant pump the big contact thing and then back there's the VFD that's used to control the main motor spindle okay so by this point in the video the machine is ready it has all of the end stops, it has the stepper motors, and it has all the ball screws in it. Um, but that turned out to only be about half of this project. So the next big chunk of stuff to do was get the control working, like all the stepper motor drivers, and getting the FPGA board to work, and installing Linux and running all of the programs for that. So um, I had never used Linux really previously to this, so I wanna just put a big, big thank you to a lot of the you know, the Linux CNC group members, they're all very useful. Um, and in particular, a guy on YouTube called The Feral Engineer. Um, he helped me out massively with this mill. Um, if it wasn't for him, it would not be working right now. So yeah, no, big thanks to The Feral Engineer for helping me get this set up. Um, and yeah, so it's currently running a GUI called ProBasic. <laughs> um, it used to be running something called GMAC GMACAPI. GMACAPI? GMACAPI. Um, and I'd use that to sort of get the basics down and learn the majority of the mill. And then once I was more comfortable with it, I was planning to move over to ProBasic, which I did. And this has proved to be a really, really good program. Um, it enables you to use things like this, Touch Probe, um, and make the most of that. So I'm able to reference off pre-existing parts and machine things that I wouldn't be, like, be able to do otherwise. So yeah, I'm really enjoying using that. Um, but a lot of work was spent trying to get things like this handset working, so I can now move around axes. Um, 
So, if we go to that. We've got full control of everything by this MPG. Um, and yeah, it's got a lot of features that a, you know a more expensive milling machine would have. So I'm I'm quite happy with how it's turned out. Um, if you want to see more videos regarding this machine or potentially how I went about assembling that big box of doom there, then let me know. I can do those. Um, but otherwise, this is kind of the state it's currently in. It will be upgraded more in the future. Um, I want to get a better vise. Um, this one currently I have made the soft jaws for it and we'll be making some some fixture plates soon when I have some material. Um, and I'd also like to get the spindle encoded it's because that would be quite useful and I need some better coolant guards as this plasticky stuff does an okay job for protecting this area of the room but everything else still gets covered in coolant. We've done quite a lot of machining of parts so far, we've gone through quite a few of these bins of mainly aluminium but it's done some steel and at one point I inadvertently went through a stator plate that had a magnet in it which I learned that magnets break bits as the chips can't ev evacuate anywhere. Uh, for anyone who might be interested, the parts I've been using have mainly been milled using these free flute Banggood special uh, cutters. Uh, I've been using these for aluminium primarily and they've actually been really really good, I've been really happy with the results. I don't have much to compare it to but for what I can afford they seem really good. Um, there's also the four flute bits they do which I've been using for the more like steels and stuff like that um, and they've been working nicely as well so yeah I found that will go fairly smoothly and yeah so here's my here's my 1960s milling machine which is now CNC. I hope you enjoyed the video um, I'm working on some other interesting projects at the moment such as some diesel aircraft and my version of Koenigsegg's free valve engine on a little 125 so if you'd like to see those videos then let me know and I can make information about them um, but otherwise yeah thank you very much for watching Thank you.